all of it happened very quickly for me. I didn't expect to be in the AFL system when I was starting year 12 and was just concentrating on my studies. But um, yeah, was had, had a bit of a lucky run, I guess, and then was lucky enough to get picked up by the Cats at the end of 2006. So my first couple of years at Geelong, I guess I was still really getting used to the idea of me being an, an AFL player and, and in an AFL system. It was a very enjoyable couple of years, made some fantastic friends and um, I guess enjoyed parts of the lifestyle that comes with being a footballer in, in Geelong. I guess when I started to take, uh, or I guess when I started to want to play AFL footy more and had more desire to sort of cement myself in the senior Geelong team was when I started to put a lot more pressure on myself. Uh, I started to feel the pressure externally a bit more in that I'd been at the club for a few years, they'd signed me for another few years and I was, um, I guess, feeling that weight of expectation outside the club, inside the club and most of all probably from my self and my own perfectionistic ways. So I remember sort of coming towards the end of pre-season in my fourth season and um, feeling incredibly anxious for about a week leading up to our final testing um, and was just all putting it on myself that I had to win that sort of race and um, that sort of filtered through into how I approach training and weight and that I had to be up there with the best of them and, and these guys have been trained for 10, 12 years plus um, but I was really putting unrealistic expectations on myself and that really affected my um, enjoyment levels definitely and that filtered through into me uh, waking up in the middle of the night being stressed about a training session being worried about what a coach is thinking about me and where I stand with the playing group and right through to sort of um, I guess the normal signs and symptoms <coughs> of uh, depression in terms of having trouble eating and I guess not seeing the point of, of doing certain things because they don't or they weren't making me feel like they normally make me feel so to then go to a gathering or something that I would normally go to was a huge effort and the only way I could do that was by having a few drinks beforehand um, trying to release some of that anxiety and thinking that alcohol or um, think, yeah, thinking that alcohol was the was the way to do that. I didn't write myself off for anything, but was certainly went backwards in my recovery considerably for the next couple of weeks, um, and then that sort of uh, anger at myself for having done that each time really exacerbated all my symptoms and really pushed me further and further away. So I think I recognised things weren't right, but certainly didn't recognise it as a, as a mental health issue for quite a while. And that was a big part of what led to me becoming so unwell. We used to have to fill in uh, a little tablet at the start of each morning when you get to the club about how you're feeling. And I probably wouldn't be completely honest in how my sleep was the night before and, and how I was feeling and a lot of it was around what I thought the perception would be of me if I was to say I've got depression or, or a mental health issue, if I've got to take time off to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, how is that going to impact on my, um, yeah, how I'm seen by my, play, by my fellow players and if that's going to affect me getting a game by the coaching staff, if that's going to affect me getting a contract, um, all these sorts of things that are so um, common and, in, and for a young player in the AFL system that you do worry about anyway where you sort of stand within a club and you're trying to make your mark. So I guess my perception and uneducated perception of, of mental health led to me thinking that this is something I need to avoid for my uh, for the greater good of my career.
when I was, uh, I guess, in the in the really deep stages of my major depression, there was a few moments where they were quite scary um, for myself in terms of my own safety. And for a couple of weeks, I'd been at a stage where I needed to have someone around me. There was one particular day where Dad was home and I had some sleeping tablets that I'd got off the off the doctor months prior and hadn't sort of used. Um, and I was sitting in my bedroom floor, on my bedroom floor for probably a couple of hours with this bottle of tablets in this, I guess, trance of, I really want to get rid of this pain. I don't know how to do it. There is no, I can't see an easy fix. Um, and I guess looking at these bottles of pills as um, an option that is the quickest way to remove um, that pain. And when I did snap out of that, it was this moment of, I can't continue to live this way for any longer. and. I don't want my life to end. Well, that was the time I made the decision to go to hospital for that three week period. And um, that was really the turning point of, I guess, enough's enough and I'm really going to do what I can and seek as much help as I can to get um, through this period of my life. What I'm currently going through, um, is something that is an illness and not something that's my fault and that I've somehow brought upon myself or that effort I've taken to hide and cover up my issues were now exposed. But after a couple of days, there was this huge weight lifted off my shoulders. I wanted to open up as much as I can. It was sort of everything was out there as it was. So for me, I, I sort of made a choice then that part of my recovery was going to be, you know, talking about this more and more, particularly with young men and, and peers. I guess trying to open the door for those, those conversations so that someone doesn't have to go through the similar sort of experiences that I did.